10 millimeter versus 357 magnum and today what i have is the inceptor arx polymer matrix bullets and what this basically is is it's copper filings powdered copper something like that mixed in with polymer so you have a very light for caliber bullet and you also have these like screwdriver tip heads on here and that's kind of like a um, it's supposed to basically disrupt hydraulic pressure, I, I guess, and, and slow the bullet down, cause as much damage as a hollow point, something of that nature. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, if that actually works that way, but I do know one thing. Whenever you take a bullet and you put it really light, oftentimes you, or pretty much always, you, you bring down that momentum down very, very low. So it is very easy to stop a bullet that has very little momentum because it's moving fast, but it has very little bullet weight. And I have, for a long time, kind of thought these would be the ammunition of the future because you think about it, really what it is, it, it's copper filings. It's mixed with probably pretty much any any old plastic. So you could probably make bullets out of old pop bottles, out of anything, really. And you could probably use any type of metal for a matrix other than just copper. So when you think of it that way, it kind of is an economical choice. I think it would make an excellent uh, cartridge out of pretty much anything that you would make it out of. So it makes a lot of sense rather than than to use continue to use lead. And it makes a lot more sense than making solid copper because that's extraordinarily expensive to do. But just a little tiny bit of copper with any old melted plastic, it makes a lot of sense. So we're gonna go through the chronograph and we're just gonna see what kind of a velocity and accuracy we're getting at the same time. And by the way, the 357 Magnum is an 86 grain rated at 1650 feet per second. The 10 millimeters and 90 grain rated at 1780 feet per second. So 520 foot pounds rated on the 357, 633 foot pounds on the 10 millimeters. So very powerful 10 millimeter cartridge. So we're gonna go through the Juggernaut box, which contains a one and three quarter inch pack of bologna. That kind of simulates like a pectoral muscle size piece of meat covered by four layers of denim, followed by one quarter inch medium density fiberboard. That's actually pretty tough and it, it represents ribs or sternum. And to water jugs to catch these bullets. And how this normally compares to ballistics gels out the back of jug one, about nine inches, back of jug two, 12 inches, back of jug three, 15 inches, back of jug four, 18 inches. And that pretty much lines right up with, with what you expect to see in ballistics jump for this particular medium. So let's get started with the test between the 10 millimeter and 357 Magnum Inceptor ARX. So let's get started. All right, I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. We'll see how close we get to 1650 feet per second rate of velocity with the 357 Magnum. Fifteen seventy eight. Fifteen fifty five. I'll read. I'll read. Sixteen oh eight. Sixteen thirty. I'll run a couple more rounds. Fourteen seventy six, fifteen ninety six. So except for the one, we had okay uh, consistency of velocity. However, those shots are really coming down into into the right for me, and I, I know I'm not pulling those shots. So a little bit off accuracy uh, for me with this gun. So let's see how the ten millimeter compares. All right, ten millimeter. This is rated at seven hundred and eighty feet per second. It didn't feed very well in that first round. Uh, so we'll see how close we get to 780. 777. 18. 27. 1769. 1810. 1793. Almost no recoil. That's a 9mm recoil, uh, but a lot of velocity and better accuracy than that uh, 357 Magnum. So Generally, that 357 is more accurate for me. So that says a little bit of something about the ammunition. Now let's hit the ballistic box and see how these two compare to each other. All right, first up, we have the 357 Magnum. We'll see what we get here. 
pretty good amount of splashback. Baloney pack is still intact. Here's the baloney pack, good shot through the denim. It actually did provide more damage than I think the full metal jacket would, would provide. Um, through the fiberboard though, of course, we're not going to see any um, indication of expansion because it's not going to expand. It's also not a fragmenting round either uh, because it's something like larger than 20% of the bullet size that it will break up into. So it's not technically fragmenting, but it, it does look like it kind of entered almost like a tumbling because it's a little bit oblong. So let's see what we got in water jugs. All right, the first jug actually has just a huge amount of damage. It blew off the threaded cap. It blew this whole thing apart. So it's dumping a huge amount of energy in this first jug. So I would have su suspected that anyways because we're losing a lot of momentum really fast. I'm not even sure if we'll get into jug three, but here's jug two. Looks like we did go through two and it cracked it. And there's definitely an oblong hole coming out the back of two. So, and, and also the impact is drifting upward significantly. There is a little dent, a little dent on jug four. So we can call it that that's about 15 inches comparison to ballistic shell, which is right on par with what we want to expect. And there is a hole at the back of jug three. There's no impact on four. So I don't know where that bullet is. Definitely not leaking. So more than likely what happened is that bullet just shot upward somewhere. Um, I've seen that before. I don't think it would have screwed it around because it did impact jug four. So it bounced off jug four. So no bullet recovered. But we definitely see a bunch of oblong holes. It's definitely tumbling or moving sideways, keyholing, and then shooting out. But still, very good penetration at 15 inches comparison to gel. So let's see how the 10 millimeter compares. All right, 10 millimeter auto, we had a lot more power compared to the 357 Magnum. So let's see how this does. Definitely a lot more damage going on. Baloney pack in front of me, first jug absolutely destroyed. All right, I recovered most of this baloney pack and it just absolutely shredded this whole thing. This is a lot of damage. This is what we see with hollow points. So just a massive amount of damage. Now the fiber board is in the box here and it looks like a much straighter hole going through. It doesn't look like it started to tumble or anything like that. All right, the first jug is just absolutely annihilated. This is some of the worst damage I've ever seen. So it's definitely dumping a huge amount of energy in this first jug. That's very impressive. Jug two, completely empty. Um, typically, when you have a second jug that's completely empty, it's definitely more powerful than some. Uh, jug three is completely cracked in the top here. It is drifting up a little bit, but not as much as the 357. Impact in jug four. It's a big old hole, very top of the jug, and four. So. Comparison to the ballistics gel, this is going to be roughly about 19 inches. And this time we definitely have a recovered bullet. Uh, there's no uh, breaking up of that bullet. It is completely solid and unchanged. So I would say if we look at these cartridges, the, the 357 has a lot to be desired. There's, I, I can't really see a purpose for it. Uh, less power than most. Um, it, it, the penetration was good. The damage was lower than most. The, the velocity consistency wasn't that great. So I just can't really see a good reason to use an ARX uh, 357 in a full size gun. Maybe in a stub nose. We did test it in the past with a stub nose. Did pretty good. Lightens the gun up a little bit. Now when we look at 10 millimeter, it makes more sense. For, first of all, we had adequate penetration, adequate damage. Now, the big difference was that these were 90 grain and typical um, 10 millimeter bullets we're talking 180 grain 200 grain so you know bullets that are less than half the weight of some that makes a big difference when you have like let's say 15 rounds of 10 millimeter you're cutting you know 
100 grains times 15, 1500 grains, that's uh, that's a good three ounces from your firearm's weight versus traditional ammo. And while three ounces doesn't sound like much, it actually, it makes a big difference. And especially if you go to something smaller, like you have a Glock 29, I could definitely see maybe like 10 rounds of, of 10 or 12 rounds of this versus uh, something traditional. It would make a lot of sense for a high capacity, low recoil, personal defense round. Definitely not for bears or anything like that, but it, it would turn your 10 millimeter into a decent personal defense weapon versus some of the heavy recoiling stuff. So that's what you get today with the ARX and 10 millimeter versus 357 Magnum. Interesting ammunition to say the least. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching. And there's one more test I want to do with this ARX ammunition. I want to see how flat it shoots and how accurate it is at a little bit longer range. So I have a 12 inch circle out there at 30 yards. I'm gonna try the 357. And I'm gonna try the 10 mil mil millimeter and see how they compare. So I'm gonna go single action with this just to try to get the best possible accuracy I can get. And we'll see how this 10 millimeter and 357 compare. So here we go. Definitely flat. I pulled it a little to the right, but elevation's right. May have pulled that shot. All right, a little bit to the right for me, but uh, definitely flat shooting. Let's see how the 10 millimeter compares. All right, 10 millimeter. See how this does, 30 yards. Not sure where I hit, I think it's a little low. Very close to center. All right, I'm not sure where I hit, a little bit high. So I think the 357 was a little bit more consistent at that range for me. These sights are rather large, covering the entire target. So that's one little quick test. So again, thanks for watching.